All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today we're gonna be playing some Life Gain because, well, y'all seem to like that. And we haven't had it on the channel in a minute. And honestly, Mono Red's been out there trying to make a comeback, it seems. And I think this Life Gain pile can actually help us out. So everything in this list is either gonna have some way to gain life or have life link. And I think that's gonna be more than fine for winning those tough matchups. But we do need other cards to help in the non-Mono Red fights. So we're gonna start with Lunark Veteran. Creatures come into play, you gain life. We've seen this a lot which means we're also going to be playing Voice of the Blessed because why not, right? If everything's gaining life, you might as well get the biggest creature on the battlefield. To go along with this, we're going to be playing some Gallag Readers, which is great. And we're going to play a couple copies of Denik because Denik also has lifelink and can be played out of the graveyard so we can get a flyer, which is really cool. And Shauna Purifying Blade. Then this has double duty because if we have everything else gaining life, even if we don't attack with Shauna, we can still draw cards, which is actually pretty sweet. And we've done this before in a few other lists, so I'm hoping it works out still here. And we're going to be playing Steel Seraph because it's a flyer, it's lifelink, it can give lifelink to something else or give something else flying. So this checks a lot of boxes that we need in some of those tough matchups. Now, another card you don't see a lot of that actually gains life as well is Tamiyo Safekeeping. So I'm gonna be experimenting in this video with whether we play two or three copies of this, but I think this could help us out quite a bit for protecting some of our key creatures, but also giving us an extra two life in a pinch, which is pretty big. So let's have a shout out from the sponsor and then we'll talk about some of our more defensive cards. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of this channel, and you can show your support while getting 5% off your entire order by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs. And support this channel by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. So we are going to go ahead and play some Get Lost because we just need some removal. And also to that end, we're going to go ahead and play a couple copies of the Wandering Emperor. This has also gained some life, so it sort of fits the theme anyway, but it is more of a defensive card than anything. We will be playing some Archangel Elspeth because this makes tokens that have lifelink and obviously fits the theme. And then to go with all of this, we're actually going to play Broker's Ascendancy, which there's actually a little fun thing here because Broker's Ascendancy puts plus one plus one counter to creatures, so you could get your Voice of the Blessed to its bigger modes faster, which is also kind of cool, but it really also helps out our Planeswalkers. And we're going to be playing Skrelv Defector Might because if we can protect any of our stuff, that's all the better. So yeah, these are the cards we're going to be focused on today. You can get the full deck list like always at the end of the video, or you can go down to the description. Look for the link, the little blue arrows that are taken to our Moxfield page, and you can get today's deck, or any other cool stuff you're looking for to play in standard. Now though, let's go see if Lifelink can actually help us be a win condition on the ladder. We'll keep this one. Got the lands. Would have been nice to uh been able to... Their tech stuff a little bit more here. Going first would have been nice. I think we're going to Gala Greeters. Assume Greeters dies to something. And then maybe try to protect a Voice of the Blessed with the Tamiyo safekeeping. Probably like the best thing we can hope for. There's a good chance there's like a Liliana here. Oh, there wasn't though. <gasps> what? Oh man. Um, that was highly unexpected. Here, we're just going to go with the Voice of the Bless. I'm going to gain the two for obvious reasons. And then we're just going to pass. Mostly because I want to be able to protect my key creatures right now, if I can. Glissa. Annoying, but we can kill a Glissa in the future. Or fly over her, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm on block. Actually, am I? Yeah, I am. All right. Okay, slowly opening up things the way we want. Let's grow this. Let's gain some life. And then they get bigger. Then we'll attack for six. All right. So this could force the opponent's turn just a little bit here. Because they won't want to necessarily replay Dread Knight if they have a way to kill Voice of the Blessed here. I mean, the funny thing is, 
we don't have a way to gain any more life, so our other voice is just on the ground here, and there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so they're doing fight spell stuff. Fair enough. Well, that's unfortunate for us. But, we can get this out of the way. And at least get a big attack in here. All right, in the turn. Man, we definitely did not want to draw this much land. The good news is, if... Well, they can't even play their big guy. I was thinking if they played Obliterator, but they really can't. They need another black. We would just need to draw a creature anyway to give this flying, and that's kind of the game regardless. Oh, no! Why? How? Why is this happening to us? Okay, well, this is kind of all we can do. This is painful. Yep, you got a shield, Rid. Make an attack, make a 1-1. One, one. Sure. We don't have a benefit to blocking right now. I mean, getting a veteran to turn into a... Right, there we go, finally. Took a while to find something. But here we can just make a creature and that solves our problem. Yep. Gain two. Alright. And then we attack. Man, we almost lost that one. Super easy mulligan, because right now all we could play is Skrelves, and that's not good. Well, I guess we keep this. Maybe we get to a world where we can Shauna and protect it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we have a lot of cheap things we can draw off the top, too, though. So we'll likely just put back Get Lost, and hopefully we don't need that too much later. Alright, that could give us some possible outs down the road. Red Knight, sure. Alright, positive notes. We did find more land. So there's that. Tough. I was going to say, if we have to make a decision on killing Glissa or something else here, it would have been a rough one. Alright, I think we just pass. Maybe get to kill a Shieldred? I don't know. Really, I don't even know if we go Shauna, to be honest. We might just leave mana up for Wandering Emperor and just see what happens from there. Because we're not worried about early damage, really, since we have so much life gain. Like, and if even if they said, like, play Shieldred here. Oh, they're not going to. All right. Can't say I totally blame them. That does look a little bit sketchy. That's the turn. Because right now we kind of look like we could be a control deck of sorts. And they don't really know. Because if I was in their shoes and you hadn't seen anything yet, I'd probably be trying to play around sweepers or make disappears or whatever. Um. Hmm. Alright, I might as well take a shot at it, right? If they kill our Wandering Emperor, they kill our Wandering Emperor. I mean, there's no point in taking a full turn off to do nothing during that whole time. Oh, what are they going to do here? Kill their own thing? Oh, they had their own Tamiyo safekeeping. We're not the only ones playing that today. Look at here. All right. I see you, opponent. And they're going to kill Wandering Emperor for sport? I mean, now wouldn't be a bad time if you wanted to. All right, we can live with that. That is totally okay. Like, the truth is, that was never really a hard part of our plan. And this also means we don't have to worry about protecting something on our turn and their turn under the circumstances. So this is actually slightly a better scenario. Uh, in the turn. We will not be drawing since we have the Tamiyo safekeeping. Decline. 
Which probably looks a little fishy too, because like, why are we leaving mana open instead of drawing a card? All right, they have a shielded. That was one of the safer things that could have happened to us here. Take our turn. We will go ahead and kill a shielded. Draw. Yeah, that's not great. Not great. So now we have to make a decision. Like, actually, hmm. I guess this is okay. We could kill that. Get in for four. Still draw one and leave safekeeping up? That's eh, probably okay, I guess. Oh, no, we wouldn't even, because they have to block first. Eh, that sucks. I mean, we could just safekeeping and draw two. But then Shauna's at risk. Oh, they're not even blocking. Wow. Okay, so we just get the whole value. That's a surprise. Uh, we'll take the action. Let's draw for two. And, uh, we'll use this one just to look crafty. Leave up some blue mana. Oh, hey, it worked out. We got a mana leak. Look at that. All right, you have a Dread Knight. Finding cards. Coming after Shauna. We will just counter that. Okay. Here's some things happening now. Gain some life there. We can play this. Uh, but I'd want to leave mana up. For a safekeeping still. I think at this point we're not using this. So I would like to do this. In the turn we'll still get to draw one. Not worth running Shauna into that. We'll take the action. For one. Tapping this. Alright. There we go. That'll work. That'll work. Getting close to where we want to be. Start turning things around. Because now we can start thinking about attacking. There's a roaming throne, which... I'm not sure... I mean, I guess you could play Call Phyrexian. We've done that before. No attack for the opponent here. Excellent. Now it's just a matter of how greedy do we want to be. But I think we go ahead and play this. Go to the end of turn. We'll draw one. Leave up a safekeeping and then we can try to get crafty. I mean, we may have to block the effects of a... Well, they don't even have enough black mana yet. I was going to say from an obliterator. But... Obliterator and fight spell, but that doesn't look like that's going to be a thing right now. All right, and we have a big flying voice of the blessed. It's going to be bigger next turn. And soon we can start fighting with Shauna, even. So let's see what's up. Shieldred. We do not fear Shieldred right now. Other than, you know, losing four life, but we're going to gain a bunch each turn, so that's fine. I'm just being very careful with the... Uh map tokens as well, which I find really amusing and interesting. Yep, so we're going to gain two more. And now Shauna's going to start the draw engine as well. Go ahead and play that tapped. Attack for eight in the air. Uh-oh, what you got going on here? Some instant speed fight thing that I forgot about? Gains reach until end of turn. Sure. That's a cool card to play. 
But we do have a Voice of the Bless, which is cool, with the Tamiyo safekeeping. So we will just draw three here and leave two mana up. So I'm going to leave a blue and at least a green available. All right, found a make disappear, so that worked. So anything big they would play that's a problem, we can just counter now and try to finish them next turn. Red Knight, you can have that all you want. Yep, you got a map. Yep, we do not even fear that guy. They need another black mana right now anyway, plus a fight spell. And unless they have a discard spell, the make disappear is probably going to keep things pretty locked up here. Yep. I mean, I guess I'm going to keep this. We're on the draw, so I don't know how good this is. But maybe. Oh, man. If we were on the play, this would have been so much better. Because this is definitely dinosaurs. And we don't have any green mana. Oh, that's going to suck so much. Oh, it wasn't dinosaurs. Surprise, surprise. Lately, when we've seen that, that's exactly what it's been. Uh, might as well attack. I mean, we're not doing anything else with it. But yeah, we need some green mana pretty badly. Alright, let's stop a Godric. Okay, well, that's weird. Oh, all right, I'm going to keep this and hope to get lucky. We get two draws. Okay, well, we did it in one, so that's good. <laughs> I was going to say, going to try to get this Denic down. Though, I mean, depending on what the opponent plays, maybe we wait. No, they only left that up, and they obviously don't have a cut down here, so we're just going to take advantage of the situation. I mean, if they kill Denic, meh. And if they play, like, Liliana, we just sack the veteran. Attack Liliana, replay veteran, leave up safekeeping. Oh, it's a fight rigging. Well, that's a different problem, isn't it? Alright, I guess we're attacking. Don't know what level of fight rigging they're playing just yet, so... We can see what the opponent does first. We can attempt to kill the fight rigging or counter whatever big creature they have. Hmm. That's a lesser problematic big creature. Alright, I guess that gets to resolve. We'll just kill the fight rigging here. As much as I want to have the mana for Wandering Emperor... They'll just get all the mana to play whatever absurd thing they were going to cast with that. Oh, we still don't get to see what's under there. That's funny. All right. Can we find more land? Okay, we did, but it's tapped. But we'll go with this and hope it helps. I should realistically be playing safe here and probably just leave up Make Disappear, but we're just going for it. I mean, if they have another... Rigging, yeah, then it's whatever. <laughs> I mean, I would have ended up sacking a veteran to maybe stop it, but we'll see if Wandering Emperor is good enough to get us out of trouble or not. Probably not, but we'll see. Oh, they have multiple creature lanes too. This is going to be a rough one if we pull this out. This is definitely an example of got a little greedy. <laughs> And now I'm getting punished for it. As I should. Realistically. Alright. I mean... That's tough. But not world ending, I guess. But it's going to be a lot of damage next turn. Pass, I suppose? And the world tree. Man, opponent stacks... Booking. Alright, cool. We'll just... I mean... 
Yeah, we'll just give them the GGs. Their hand was good. Ours was not. They got us. And I got greedy. Oh boy. No blue mana, but we're going to keep this anyway. See, a lot of our stuff is cheap and happens to be white. So we could end up okay, but we'll see. This is a very ambitious keep. All right, but it kind of worked. I can say, leave my creature alone. You don't want to do nothing to him. Copper Coat Vanguard. Okay, well, we're going to try to definitely do some life gaining. This is going to start make a treasure, though. Pass the turn. Mostly so I can have options next turn of what we want to do. Ossification Shauna sounds great. Yep, no blocks. Also good. We're going to gain two. And since this isn't blocking anyway, I'm going to attempt to attack. Hope it doesn't get hit with Elspeth Smite or whatever. Probably a needless risk to get one point in. I probably should have made sure it wasn't going to die, but you never know. Another Vanguard. You got it. Uh, sure. Gonna block. Put a shield counter. Alright, fair enough. I'm gonna protect my guy too. Who can play that game? Neat. Gain life. Pass the turn. Gonna hate to have to make disappear away something, but, you know, cost of doing business if we gotta do it. Hmm. Okay, going with this. Mostly just didn't want to use up my, uh, Treasure. Oh, do you have a way to destroy an enchantment? No. They do. Oh, nope. I guess not. Wow, I thought they were gonna. Interesting. Well, they find a way to get rid of a creature. Now is their opportunity. I am not going to block a guardian. I will just take seven to the face since I'm at 24. They bought them both, that's good, so nothing too scary showing up in the near future for us. Oh, that's the guy, like, equipped heads flying, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win until we get rid of that. Fair enough. Alright, um... Hmm. How do I want to go about this? Do I want to make treasure... Do I want to... Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot of things we could do here. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and play this. Going to gain two. Give this lifelink... All right. Yep, might as well equip and protect it. So the only way we can do anything now is if we were to find a wandering emperor to get rid of that. Otherwise, it does nothing. Wait, am I missing something? I mean, I guess I could have a thing that gives it, like, plus two. But yeah, I'm, I'm your Huckleberry. I mean, if it has, they have no cards in hand, that's good for us too, right? Okay. I guess they were just testing us to see if we would block. I mean, it's not a bad thing to do. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to have a bunch of big creatures in the air now. I really wanted you to be a wandering emperor land. That would have made life so much easier. Alright, let's gain the life. Might as well give this life link. <laughs> it doesn't greatly matter here. Oh, that's not true. We can get rid of that with a, uh, what you called as well. There's, a uh, uh, the Poseidou. So we have a couple of ways to get around this. Not a lot, though. Now it's just going to be digging to answers more than anything else. The opponent probably also is going to be trying to keep scrying so they could find answers. So it's going to be a little bit of silly back and forth. But I don't think they realize if they, like, leave that tapped... They are making it susceptible to a Wandering Emperor, which is giving us more outs. Because right now, I, I'm assuming we only have, like, three outs to the situation. Or somehow them running out of cards or being sloppy or something. But real outs, probably just three right now. And there's one of them. All right, cool. Unless they can make it Hexproof, which is possible. You're ready to lose. Oh, no, because I can't pay for it. It cost me two more, not one more. Oh, no. That sucks. I blew it, y'all. I blew it. I forgot about the vanguards. Oh, that was so dumb. So dumb. So now the opponent's definitely not going to attack again. So, yeah, I just wrecked myself. So now I have to get all the way down to the uh, Poseidou, pretty much. On the plus side, the opponent likely won't be able to kill us, so there's that. Alright. Yeah, that's just a dumb mistake. Dang it. Why did I do that? Why? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> We're not too worried about it. Oh, we got another one. Not that that matters. Remember your uh, thing, I guess at some point I need do need to make some treasure or something, but... But yeah, this is just going to be one of those games, yeah, the opponent can't win here. So yeah, I definitely goofed up there, uh, playing the Wandering Emperor when I didn't need to, obviously, or couldn't really do it because I didn't have the mana. But, as it turns out, if that was their only... Like, the problem we would have had is if they would have got a second Cloudsteel Kirin. If they would have got that, then I don't think we had any realistic outs. I mean, I guess we could try to kill the creature, but then we need them to not have cards in hand. So we do have some ways to do that. So that would have got kind of ugly. But hey, I'll take the win here anyway. Our life total was just going to get too high, I think. And we eventually would deck them. I think they had 44 cards. We had 45. So we could have outlasted them, I guess. This is interesting. Uh, we'll keep it. No blue mana, but maybe Gallagreeters lives? I kind of, well, we'll see. Okay, that'll make later turns maybe a little bit better. Alright, no cut down. Playing against a black heavy deck is also interesting because... Oh no! They're going to take it. I said maybe they won't. Maybe they take the get loss. Because it's always weird when you... Okay, they're taking that. Oh, well, that's great because we got a replacement. So that's pretty sweet. I was going to say, it's always kind of tough when you're playing Deep Cavern Bats, because if they have a removal, you're almost always tempted to take the removal card. Uh, give this life link, why not? Because, like, if you don't, then they can just get rid of your Deep Cavern Bat whenever, and that's always kind of tough. Also now, since I have a Steel Seraph, they kind of want to get that out of the way. 
or else they don't really have an opportunity to attack with their bat. And this is also interesting because they know we have the get lost already. Hmm. So, do we care? I think we just go get lost here on the Rafine first. Yeah, we'll just pay the extra one. Like, don't love that, because we're possibly making their creature a little bit bigger. We can give this Vigilance, but might be fine for now. We'll see what happens. All right, you have a Shieldred. Oh, now that gets real spicy, doesn't it? Or plus one. Let's uh, make this larger. Give this vigilance. And we'll attack. I mean, at some point, I was going to say, you may consider blocking with that because we already have an Elspeth now. Now, they don't know how crazy we might try to go with the Broker's Ascendancy, though. So maybe I could have got a treasure there, so I could have brokers and possibly something else on this turn, but we'll see how it goes. Bones at 15. We have a fair amount of life gain ahead of us. They could kill Elspeth, but they know we have another one. So I don't know how they want to play this. Dinic. All right. Nothing we're too worried about. Basically, they could attack and just make us trade for a token there. Nothing too spicy. We're just gonna plus. Uh, I'll make this bigger. Then we'll go ahead and play this. Uh, they know we have the Archangel Elspeth already. I don't know if we need an extra land, so I doubt it. Alright. Give this Vigilant... Actually, mm, I should have given the other... The Gallagreeters flying. I could have ended this a lot sooner. Because we can chump block with these 1-1s one now. But it's whatever. Our creatures are bigger. We're not too worried about it. Alright. We lose an Archangel Elspeth. You now also know we only have a land in hand. I mean, they're also able to gain some life here, drawing cards, so we'll see how this goes down. Yep, another Denik on top. Actually, them putting a Denik in the yard actually gives them a flyer to play, so that's, that's not bad for them. I mean, I could trade Gallagreeters for our Shieldred here, which wouldn't be the worst thing, actually. They might also make it where we can't do that easily. Then we'll just jump block with the 2-2. Two -two. Nope, they're going to put it on a Dinnick. Sure. The rest probably isn't doing much because I'm just casting what I'm drawing the rest of the way. Yeah, like I said, if they want to trade, I mean... Well, I mean, I don't even know. We'll see how they attack. They do have two cards in hand still. All right, they're just making a token. That is an unfortunate situation, sadly. And we can attack for 610 if we wanted to. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. But no, I don't think we do. I think we give this... Actually, you know what? Maybe we do. You just say this gets flying, those both tap, opponent goes to three, they could draw, go to two. We're chump blocking some things. But then what? Maybe it doesn't even matter. I mean, they could gain four, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give this flying. I think I'm going to gamble, which if you got something in hand, you got it, you know? 
Like, this feels worth it. If they can kill the Steel Seraph, so be it. I mean, you got something, I'm sure. Oh, Fairy Mastermind, that's all. That ain't even that bad. <laughs> like, that keeps them alive. I mean, it's worth doing, but... Yeah, I, I would jump block there, too. Buy yourself at least another turn. Sadly, it's a tap land, but we kind of give up our hand strength. Alright. Now, we know they can still play a Denic here. I mean, the issue here is they might have to attack with their Denic that's already in play just to make sure they can gain enough life. Okay, not really, because you can still jump block with the 3-2, assuming I don't find a removal. Which is fair. Yeah, I mean, they can attack into Elves, but we don't care. Like, we can block all day. Or even just let Elspeth take damage, depending on what they attack with. Okay, they're only attacking with Denik. That's fine. Then we'll just double block. Like, we're gaining so much life, we almost don't care about Shieldred, really. Yep. You get a clue, which does equal two life. So that matters. Oh. Well, oh, that's not quite going to do it. Because I get rid of that, we only attack for 12. 13. Yeah, it's close, but not quite there. Oh, wait, not true. We could give one of these flying also. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, let's go ahead and target the Denik, the flying. Okay, and they don't have anything. So then we just go ahead, give one of these tokens flying... And then we give this flying. And that'll do it. All right. Good game to win there. Okay, this looks like something we'll keep. I mean, obviously, we're leading with Gallag Readers. We'll see what the, uh, the opponent does the rest of the way. Oh, we found a mono red deck. Look at that. Hey, no play with fire. That's the biggest thing right now. Oh, this is not mono. Well, maybe we didn't. Okay, let's play this. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and play this. I'm going to go ahead and gain the two. Not really sure what the opponent's doing just yet, but next turn we could gain some life. We could draw a card. Throw the voice and just kind of see what happens. Brotherhood's in. Sure, that makes sense. Well, they were willing to blow that up when they had a creature out. Not sure what that means, but all right, let's go with this. And now they're going to play with Fire Us. Okay, this is uh, all very peculiar. I don't know what's happening. I mean, they might just have another removal card and not care about the Shauna, honestly. Oh, you know what? This is probably... Oh, no, it's not that. Never mind. Thought I knew what it might be for a second. But the decks I was thinking of definitely would not be playing a Gatekeeper. Playing two Gatekeepers. Alright, that's a thing. So if we play creatures, we take damage. All right. Or we could just do this, I guess. It doesn't really matter which one. And then we attack. Yeah, real talk. I don't know what the opponent's deck does right now. I'm, I'm a little baffled. Not saying it's bad. I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> And then we'll take action to draw a card. Oh, a backup Shauna. I guess that's okay. I mean, I'd rather it be some other creature, obviously. But So now we can't gain life. Alright, that's funny, because that's a card that should wreck our world here. Interesting. We are not blocking. 
And they chose not to use... Hmm. Okay. I'm just thinking they chose not to use the maps. And I'm not 100% sure why. But let's go ahead and attack. When it goes to seven, we will, in the turn, we will draw three cards. Oh my gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, it would have been hard for that to be worse. That was absolute trash. Alright, so we go to 14, opponent goes to 11. Oh, we go to 18. Yeah. Opponent's still not using their maps. Okay, festivities gets rid of Gala Greeters. That's fair. Um, We need them to not... Well, no, I guess we could still counter that. So that's fine. Uh, let's see, we're going to draw three. Yeah, we'll play this tapped. We can't attack here, really. So that's no good to us. We pass? I mean, I assume they're just going to play Angel Fire Ignition again. Yep, and we'll counter it this time. Man, let's find a Planeswalker or something. <laughs> like... It, I mean, you're a card. I don't know if you help at all. Or one of our creature lands would be good, so we could fly over the top. That would be excellent. I mean, we have options. We just gotta get there. Arsonist. Okay. The opponent's at eight. I mean, all right, we'll, we'll go to 13, I guess. I mean, in some future world, we will draw <laughs> something else that gains life. Until then, I don't know what we're going to do. Honestly, let us just find Archangel Elspeth. That, that would solve so much. Okay, opponent's going to go all the way down to four. Though now I kind of want a Wandering Emperor to get rid of this Rim Careless. Okay. They're going to give that first strike. Oh, it already has first strike. I'm going to give it a plus one, plus one. Interesting. They didn't even want to keep that? Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I guess maybe they they have a card they're probably looking for here. Okay. Archangel Elspeth, you showed up. Good to see you, friend. Um... So, if we give this minus, we only have two, so we'd be setting Elspeth up to die. But, we would grow both boats of the Vess. Yeah, we, we gotta do it. It also puts the pressure on the opponent here. They've got to block with their Rim Careless. All right, those each grow. We will draw, I'm gonna draw three and see if we find a make disappear or something. One, two, three. Uh, let's tap this, this, and one of these. All right, we did find a make disappear, so that could matter, we'll see. But now they're only at four and they've got to deal with Shauna. They can only attack us for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 right now. 4, 4, 2, and 1 from the Arsonist. Yeah, this is an interesting build. I would not have expected to see the Brotherhoods in with the types of creatures they were playing. But I guess if you were playing this, then if a spell deal damage, you prevent that damage. So kind of makes sense, actually. Interesting build, for sure, from the opponent. All right, so what's the worst that happens here? Really nothing. I mean, we're sitting on a make disappear, so we just let the opponent do what they're going to do. I mean, even if they would have used their maps, it just wouldn't have amounted to anything. All right, here we go. They got a spell. What is it? Just to play with fire? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. But even makes blocking the hound easier here.
Yep. And that's it. I mean, yeah, you could have done that pre-combat, but I don't think it would have changed much. Nope, that one wasn't... Oh, but that gets two blockers. Oh, they don't have enough land. Because they don't have any legends. This costs four. Yeah, they would have needed one more land. Well, it wouldn't matter anyway. We would just fly over Shauna, so... It's a realm. They finally hit the land part of their deck, whereas we'd been drawing all of our land. Yep. Seems good, and we'll just attack. That'll do it. All right, so it took a little bit to hone this list in throughout the video, but this actually kind of worked out okay. My, if anything, and this is going to sound a little weird, but I almost wanted more Tamiyo safekeeping. Like, to the point that I would almost get rid of Skrelf. Not saying I want to, but it's kind of to the point of how I felt. Tamiyo safekeeping did so much work being able to chump block things. Not even chump block, but like just get you quality blocks, get you some life gain, like block removal. It just did so many different things in this list. I'm not sure where I would find the space, but I would say if you don't have other things, then feel free to play the actual more Tamiyo safekeeping. But the list we ended up with was four Lunark Veteran, two Skrelv, two Tamiyo safekeeping, two Get Lost, four Voice of the Boss, three Make Disappear, four Gallag Readers, two Dinnick, two Brokers Ascendancy, three Shauna, two Archangel Elspeth, two Wandering Emperor, four Steel Seraph. One Iganjo, two Plains, an Island, Beseju, one Forest, four Attaker Waste, two at Restless Anchorage, four Sea Chrome Coast, two Br four Brushland, sorry, one Overgrown Farmland, and four Razor Verge Thicket. So yeah, real big fan of this. This was a lot of fun, and I thought it was neat because this is one of those ones where it felt like each game we won felt a little bit different. Like sometimes we were kind of living off of the Gallag Readers, other times it was the Voice of the Bless. You know, I think the last game, it was all because of uh, Archangel Elspeth. So it was cool that each of the different cards actually came in and did what they were supposed to. I would say while this is still a thing you want to use to beat like Mono Red or the other aggro decks, you just still have to play carefully. Like just because you're gaining a lot of life doesn't mean you get to just ignore what they're doing, right? You still have to play around their key cards, their burn spells. But again, I think that Tamiyo Safekeeping is such a good card for this list that if you don't have something else, I would consider making those replacements Tamiyo Safekeeping because they really were that good when we drew them. And now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Dragon Lord Dramoka. Mostly because this is a card I don't see out there a ton, but it still carries a decent value at north of $10 on most sites. And this is actually just a really good card. Like, the fact that it has lifelink and flies is really cool, but your opponent can't play stuff on your turn, which is always great. And that can limit a lot of options that could make things problematic for you in combat. But, you know, anytime you're playing thing with life gain or dragons or flying or whatever, like this checks a lot of different boxes. It is a little bit expensive to cast, but comes with a lot of abilities that could be worth it. And I had a lot of fun with this deck, but if you want to see another one that I had a good time with, it was a tokens list that we went and made as many tokens as we could possibly make, and it was a whole lot of fun. You should check that out. So that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.